Between the years 1300 and 1700, they used a really interesting technique for punishment. They would take these iron claws and heat them up, right? Then they'd attach the iron claws to a wall. A woman we brought into the room, a woman accused of adultery or a similar sexual crime, and she would be forced onto the wall onto the claws. If she was wearing a shirt, it would be removed and both of her breasts would be placed into each claw. The red hot claws would be clamped down onto her breasts and then she would forcibly be be ripped away from the wall, ripping her breasts off. This is called the breast ripper, and it was used in Europe from 1300 to 1700. Now, if that kind of thing you absolutely hate, but you also think that it's pretty interesting to hear about, this video is just for you. Today, we're going to be talking about a bunch of historical punishments that were absolutely brutal. I'll link the list that I got these from down in the description. They go from, like, how lethal they are. So the first ones are going to be pretty psychological and not really harmful, and those are kind of boring, so I'll get through those pretty quick. And then as we get down and further into the video, it's going to be a lot, a lot more gruesome and brutal and lethal. And before we get into this, um, I have a Discord where I just kind of talk with my with, with the people that joined. So go join that if you want to join in and talk to me. Um, I have an Instagram where I just post me, you know. Go check that out too. Um, and subscribe, obviously. Please subscribe. Please. Please subscribe. Um, so again, like I said, the first ones are going to be kind of boring. So I'm only going to cover like a few of the ones in the very first like layer. First of all, white room torture is an actual method of torture that people use, right? It's like a real like it's classified as torture. And I, that was surprising to me because that means that Vsauce, the crazy mad lad from Vsauce actually did torture for like what, like two days he did it for? For anybody that doesn't know the video, a white room torture is when you're placed into a white room where the walls are white, the ceiling's white, the floor is white, your bed's white, your food is all white, you only get like a powdered grain and like water that's also white. Your clothes are white, the only thing that's not white in the room is you, unless you're white too and then everything's white. And you just live there, like now, <laughs> like that's just like where you live now. And it just makes you go crazy, right, because like th there's nothing that can stimulate you at all. There's no stimulation. The light stays on 24 7 bright room nothing but anyways yeah this is used like on criminals and stuff to make them go crazy this is used to extract information you know because you just go crazy after a while um but this one's more modern next i want to talk about sleep deprivation which is also some torture where you just can't sleep they give you drugs to where you can't sleep right pretty self-explanatory but i want to bring this up because this is the exact plot of the Russian sleep experiment Creepypasta, um, which is awesome. If you don't know that Creepypasta is about like, it's a, it's a Russian experiment in a prison where they got these people and they didn't let them sleep. They put like gas in there that like, I guess keep like a stimulant gas that like, keeps them awake or whatever. And then they just didn't sleep and they all like went crazy and started killing each other and stuff. Um, it was fake, but yeah, I mean, what it actually does to you is it just kind of makes you go like you hallucinate a little bit and you go a little crazy, but you don't like, get like violent tendencies i don't think next one this layer that's not actually like lethal at all um is the scold bridle i wanted to bring up so what a scold is back in the like middle ages and stuff a scold was a woman who spoke out of turn like a woman who spoke too much i guess um we need to bring that term back i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding but so a scold's bridle is a punishment that would be used on these scolds to punish them for speaking out of turn. And what it was is it was a headgear that would go around your whole head, right? And it would like lock in the back and it would have a piece that goes in your mouth that has like a little like plate that keeps your like tongue down so you can't eat or talk or anything um, to keep you to shut to shut you up. But I want to bring this one up because I swear I've seen this in the back of the Spencer's before. Like, multiple times, I've seen this exact thing in the back of the Spencers. <laughs> but anyways, like, in the Middle Ages, they would, like, put this in women and then bring them to, like, a public square or whatever, you know? To, like, publicly humiliate and scold them, I guess, yeah. Also, apparently, China has used tickle torture as an actual form of punishment, which is <laughs> hilarious. And also, Rome did, apparently. Um, there's not a lot of evidence to support this, but it's, like, believed that Rome and China in ancient times have done that, which is hilarious. Also, pitch capping is one that's not lethal somehow. Like, this seems lethal to me, right? So what it is, is they, they you know, like tar, like, like black tar, you know, like the sticky stuff that you get like really hot and then it like molds, right? So what they do is they put it on your face and they let it dry and then they like rip it off your face. That's pitch capping. I don't know how that doesn't kill you, 
Um, because to me, that would make you, I, I feel like that would make you look like the guy from Funky Town. And if you don't know what Funky Town is, then you're, you're very, very lucky. Don't look up Funky Town. Um, but that's what it would look like, right? Editor, put like an artist rendition of Funky Town in here because don't, don't, don't put the real one. And the other ones here are boring. You know, you have Chinese water torture, which like every YouTuber has tried at least once. You have sexual humiliation, which that one's not even like a punishment. That's like, I mean, I guess it is punishment, but people like that. Pe people like that. Like we have forced circumcision and genital mutilation, which I mean, that's pretty bad, but it's like self-explanatory. It's not very interesting to talk about, I guess, you know? Here's an interesting one though, last one of the boring ones, right? This is exposure to extreme temperatures, right? And this came from the CIA actually, the all-American CIA, the people that did MKUltra with the uh, Polybius, <laughs> Polybius arcade games. So this is a quote from somebody who was detained by the CIA, okay? On a daily basis during the first two weeks, I was made to lie on a plastic sheet placed on the floor which would then be lifted at the edges. Cold water was then poured onto my body with buckets. I would be kept wrapped inside the sheet with the cold water for several minutes. I would then be taken for interrogation. That sounds like hell. That sounds like hell. Um, another one, I'm not gonna read the whole quote again if that's kind of boring, but another one is they would just like lock people in like cold cells, like it's extreme air conditioning, right? And just like freak them out. Um, then there's also sweat boxes, which they would like lock them in a box and like get the heat really high and like make them sweat. All right, I'm, that's pretty much it though for the boring ones. We can get into level two. These are ones that can result in death, but also cannot. It's kind of just like as possible. All right, and now in the second level, we have the breast ripper that I talked about in the very beginning. That one's still crazy that they actually did that. That's, that's wild to me. Now we have deprivation of food, which seems kind of boring at first, you know, because it's just like, oh no. You can't eat anymore. Like, it's scary, right? But it's kind of boring. Like, it's not interesting or whatever. But here's where it gets interesting, okay? So, if, you, if you're deprived of food, right? They still want to keep you alive for pretty long to torture you, right? So what they do is they force feed you through the other end so that you don't die. That's crazy. That's actually crazy to me. They give you, like, food nutrient enemas. Literal enemas is what they call it. They call it enemas. Okay, next, I want to talk about the use of castor oil which if you don't know what it is, I don't really know either and I still don't know, but apparently I do know that it gives you insane diarrhea if you eat it. So it started out as like a punishment that parents would give to their children back in ancient times, like like they would make them drink it if they were being bad. But then its most notorious use of punishment came in fascist Italy under Guess who, guess who, Mussolini. The fascists would like force feed like gallons of castor oil and just, it would like, it, it could kill you how much it gives you diarrhea. Like it could kill you how much it like messes with your insides. And then apparently they would also layer it with like beatings. I, I can only assume where they would be the people to make it easy for infection. That's, that's messed up, bro. That's crazy. That is messed up, shoddy. Next up, we have denailing, which just in the name makes me, oh. So this one was used in medieval times as well, and it was literally getting pliers or something to just take it out. This is like, oh my god, that one scene from John Wick, what is it, 3? I think it's John Wick 3, where like the, the, the ballerinas, whatever, oh my god, I hate that. And apparently sharp objects were also like inserted in there first before removing it to just make the pain even worse, dude. I'm gonna regret, I'm gonna regret researching this video, oh my gosh. Next we have the Heretic's Fork. Now I hate this one because this one gives us Christians a bad name. I'm a Christian, by the way, I follow Jesus, Jesus loves you, anyways. This gives us a bad name because this was used primarily by the Catholic Church in about like the 1100 to 1200, right? During the Inquisition. This was like a big wave of basically like finding heretics in the church and like, you know, <laughs> removing them. And it's called the Heretic's Fork because basically what it is, I'll put the picture on screen, it's like this fork that goes like kind of like in your chin and then like in your. That's a bad angle, oh my god, <laughs> I look awful. And then like in your chest right here, right? And then you'd be like laying down with this, right? And then if you like to like move your head any bit, it would like either like stab into your chin or stab into your chest, which, oh my God. Cause like, it doesn't sound that bad for like, maybe like a minute, right? If you're laying there for like a minute, it's whatever, right? But they would have them for like days like this until they would admit, oh, I'm a heretic. Like days of that, days of that, man, no way. Oh my, okay guys, 
side note here, right? Side note here. I I, I just whenever I'm recording these videos, um, I will look it up right before I talk about it just to make sure I don't miss anything, right? And the next one I'm talking about is combing, which is a punishment. I looked up combing punishment, but I forgot the B, right, in the thing. So I just put up coming punishment. And apparently, there's a website called deathpenalty.org that tells you all the upcoming death penalties. As of right now, the next one is on February. Wait, what the hell? Yeah, on February 28th in Texas, Ivan Cantu is being executed. Why Why is there a website for this? What the hell? And why does this website look better than like half the ones we use for school? Like I'm in high school. Oh my God. Anyways, anyways. Sorry, I feel like I yap more whenever I'm on camera. <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind. Anyway, so combing, right? So back in the medieval times, they used these like metal iron combs to get like cotton and like wool from sheep and stuff, you know, like to comb that. Um, but then some people had a more sinister use for it. So some notable victims is in the 6th century BC when Croesus' half-brother failed to seize and to hold the throne of the Lydian Empire. He was put to death by having him like ran over a comb. Where I mean you can just imagine just like, just like, what's, what's the word, um, strips of skin being removed like at a time. That's, oh my god, that's awful. And they really did that to you back in the day. They That was like their way of like, oh, we need to punish a criminal. Let's just do this. Okay, and that does it for the ones that can or cannot result in death. Now we're going to get into the ones that will probably end in death. Okay, for this one, I'm starting with bamboo under fingernails. This one, more than any of these today, has made my skin crawl. That makes me want to die, right? So they would take bamboo sticks, like sharp bamboo sticks, right? They would do this in China, by the way, this is like a Chinese punishment, just in case you're wondering, ancient China. So they would take these like sharp bamboo sticks, right? Get them under your fingernail, like secure your hand there or whatever, right? Oh my God, I'm gonna say it. Get a hammer, right? Get a hammer and go pow, pow, and like wedge it under there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I wanna die. I really can't imagine like a worse, a worse thing, like a worse punishment. Like how would that even kill you though? I don't know how that would kill you. Cause I was about, I was about to say like, I, I don't know how that would kill you. I don't know why it's in the Slayer. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter though. But I can't imagine like a worse non-lethal punishment than that. Like, dude, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I would rather the shoddy I'm talking to make me listen to like every Taylor Swift album in order than do that. I would rather watch the whole Skeepity Toilet series a million times until I die than have bamboo under my fingernails. I mean, I still just want to do that. I just, I just want to watch Skibbity Toilet. Either way, it's really, I mean, I'll just do that for free. And now we have another kinky one too. We have oxygen deprivation. Another, another, another kinky one. Um, this is just like, it's, uh, you know, they control your breath, breath play. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. But yeah, it's a torture method where they don't let you breathe unless like, like for extended periods of time. And then like once it's after, it's like, tell me who did it, tell me who. I'll never tell you. And then you can't breathe. You get the idea. Okay, now I want to talk about the ducking, the ducking stool, which is also known as the cucking stool. So what this one was, it was used in the 17th century, right? And in England, of course it's English, bro. The British people are some weird stuff, bro. British people are weird, and you'll see why here in a second. So what they would do is they would get a toilet or a commode, right? And they would tie it to this, like, apparatus. I'll put a picture on screen, right? An apparatus that, like, you know, like, gets it over the water, right? They would get the prisoner or whatever the punished person tie them to the toilet restrain them on the toilet right which is already weird and then they would repeatedly dunk them in the water like with the rope right they would like Boop. and apparently this was so humiliating and terrifying that people would die equally as much from drowning versus just pure shock which is crazy which is absolutely crazy and i don't even know why they called it a cucking stool either like do they make your beta boyfriend watch while you're doing that? You're getting ducked in the water and your beta boyfriend's watching <laughs> just in the corner <laughs> at their cucking stool. <laughs> okay, now we want to talk about water cure, which is a form of torture where they make people drink a whole bunch of water all at once. And one of those pictures for it is hilarious. I'll put it on screen. I have it. I'm going to pull it over here. <laughs> this guy is so fat, bro. <laughs> no, but yeah, they would just like make you just like, in, they would force feed you all this water that could result in like water toxicity and like death even, and it would just mess you up all sort of ways. This one's pretty popular too. They used it in the East Indies, France, Germany, Spain, even the United States, they use this. Kind of crazy. Japan, Philippines, oh, it keeps going. Speaking of water, man, drinking water, how do you guys like your water? Like, 
Because low-key me, I think the best water is either warm or lukewarm. Um, ice water is disgusting, ice cold water is a little bit better but still disgusting. Hot water is pretty good, but the best water is like a room temperature, like a nice like warm cup of water. Unless it's like really hot outside and then I guess like a chill, like a cool cup of water. But ice water is just so gross. I feel like I'm weird for that, I don't know. Let me go in the comments guys, what do you, what do you guys think about that? Okay, so now we're gonna go into the really cool ones that will definitely end in death. Now I'm gonna stop skipping any of them, I'm just gonna go through all of them now. So first up we have crucifixion. I This one is so interesting to me because being a Christian, right, I have heard about the crucifixion, you know, because like, oh, Jesus died on the cross, whatever. Um, I've heard about that so much and I never really thought about what it actually meant. And I feel like a lot of people don't really understand what the crucifixion actually is, but it is such a bad, like I was, um, I was researching the crucifixion of Jesus specifically just for religious reasons, you know, um, to see if it like historically happened. So I was like looking up like, the actual research of like what they did in Rome back then, right? And it is crazy how it actually works. So how it starts, right, is they take the prisoner. Um, by the way, these prisoners are like murderers, usually or thieves, right? And they would take the prisoner, they would beat them with like whips and stuff, right? Like whips that had like rocks on the end of it and stuff, like until their back was like, you could see their spine, right? Is like how far they went. They would do that. And then they would take this person who's beaten and wants to die already, right? He, he just wants to be dead at this point. He just wants it all to be over, right? Me for real. He would be forced to carry his own giant wooden cross, right? Or stick, sometimes they used. Which, I mean, I, think about that. Think about how big one of those things are, right? Pure wood, and you would drag it, usually walking for like multiple miles, dragging that thing, right? Take hours, right? At that, in that state, take hours. So you get to the destination, you get to where you can put the cross down. You put the cross down, and then they hoist you up on it. And then they, like right through about like right here, right? They nail you into the cross or the stick, either like right, either like this or like this, right? And then they would do the same thing to your ankles, right? But then people don't really realize how you die from crucifixion, right? Because obviously, you know, you bleed from this, you bleed from your back, whatever, right? But the thing that really kills you in the end is that you lose oxygen. You basically like suffocate, right? And how that happens is that when your body is put like this or like this, right? It takes muscle to keep you upright. But then if you're in there for long enough, because they put you there overnight, right? It takes some like days sometimes, right? Your muscles get weak enough where they physically can't do it anymore. And then at that point, your shoulders dislocate. And then you have to keep relocating your shoulders to go up to breathe and then go back down to like let the breath out, right? Or it could be opposite, whatever. But you have to like do that over and over again just to breathe, right? And then eventually you just get so exhausted that you physically can't do it anymore and then you just suffocate to death. This sounds like one of the worst ways to die ever. One of the worst ways to die, all right? It's a new day now. Um, I quit recording last night because I got scared because it was really quiet in my house. So I'm back though, um, I have the same shirt on. Different pants though, different pants, I'm not that weird, but same shirt, you know, so that it's not too jarring for you guys. But anyways, crucifixion was the last, now we're talking about dry boarding, which is basically the opposite of waterboarding. So they will stick rags up your nose and up your mouth, right? And then tape it shut so you can't breathe. Um, and then they would do this to kill you sometimes and sometimes just to extract information. Like one notable case is that in 2011 during a What's it called? A, a Freedom of Information Act. It came out this one guy named Ali Saleh Al Marie, who was a legal resident of the US, was brought into the Navy because he was classified as an enemy combatant. I wonder why. Airports be like. And then he was brought to the Navy brig in the US and this was done to him. So yeah, this one is not good. This one is not good. Not good. Next on the list is starvation, which is pretty obvious. I mean, they've done this one forever like this has just been a torture technique forever they've always done this for a while now um they just take away your food for a little bit you know which i guess isn't the worst thing in the world like not saying it's a good thing like don't don't do this right don't do this i don't want to trigger anything in anybody don't do this please but i'm just saying like theoretically if you're speaking medically a fast could be theoretically good for someone right i mean that's like a thing that people do right it's like a little like fast but I guess if you do it so long that you die, it's not not good. Next on the list, we have the brazen bull, which is one of the coolest methods of execution ever. So this was a Greek thing in ancient Greece. You know, they would make a 
bronze bowl that was hollow inside and then they would stick the victim inside there right and lock them in and they would set a fire underneath it so it would heat them up and burn them to death right but here's the thing they would also install some kind of apparatus okay this one also by the way we don't know if it actually happened or not it could be a total fake thing right we don't know it could be fake we've it's in the writings right but it could be a story made up to intimidate people we don't know if it's for true and I kind of think it's fake too because of what I'm about to say, but according to the official real world lore of this thing, right, there was an apparatus that would make the screams of the victim turn into a actual like bull's roar, which seems stupid. And then also like it would make the steam of the heat or some bullcrap, right, it would make that into actual like, like steam come out. I think it's bullcrap. I mean, I don't think this one's real, but it is pretty crazy. Next we have the Iron Maiden. This one. This one's wild. This one's actually wild. This one is, um, it's, it's that thing in Matilda. You see Matilda, uh, the girl? I've, never, I've seen the movie forever. I just remember this one scene because it freaked me out as a kid. But she's like, the, she's just a girl or whatever, right? And she gets put into this thing that has like spikes. It's like a, like a coffin, but it sits up, you know? And it's got spikes. This is also in, um, Despicable Me, right? That one scene from Despicable Me. Editors, put these in, please, as I say them, because this is awesome. So it's like this, like, coffin, right? That you stand up in. And there's spikes in it and then once you close it there's spikes everywhere right and in those two kids movies the spikes aren't very long but in the real world when this did actually like was used the spikes were so long that as soon as you shut it it would just instantly impale you and kill you so they use this obviously in ancient times when they didn't really have other methods of execution or whatever um but also there's a myth that this one was also a myth too this one could have also been not even real so we don't know but at least we got a really cool band out of it Right, we got that one band, Metallica. Next up, we have Decapitation. This one's not very well known, actually. So what it is, is it's when your head gets cut off. Pretty crazy, right? And also, in addition to Decapitation, they used to just use it like with an axe, right? They'd like, ah, oh, ah, oh, with an axe to kill you, right? But then the French, because of course the French did this because they're stupid. They, I'm just kidding, just kidding. They decided to like make a guillotine to make it faster because it was too much work so they invented this thing to make it faster like back in like the french revolution or whatever i think right let me, let me double check this before i say this yes yes i was correct it was used to kill king louis xv1 and marie antoinette so i'm pretty smart next up we have crushing which was used in britain mostly it was used as torture like asia and other countries like that used it as like a murderous thing like to execute and we'll get into that later with some other more specific entries but in britain it was used to torture people and england because of course this is england because british people are stupid what they would do is i'm just kidding they would crush people before they were even like convicted of a crime if they were accused of a crime they would crush them to get them to like plea literally like to like pressure them into pleading but then also the most based use of this in history was in the witch trials in america the salem witch trials use crushing as a way to get rid of the witches um like ex this one guy giles Corey, he was a farmer in 1692 right in massachusetts in massachusetts um but then he was caught up in the accusations of the witch trial at the time because he had previously killed somebody or whatever right and they thought that he was a, uh, a, a witch or whatever. And then here's a quote from the Massachusetts Historical Society. Giles was asked to strip naked and lay down, face up on the ground. A wooden board was in place on top of him, and on top of the board, one by one, Sheriff George Corwin placed large rocks. After two days, two days of this torture, through which Giles had remained silent, never crying out, he was asked to plead. Giles did not want his property to be taken, so he did not plead either way. On the third day, 19 September 1692, he died from being pressed to death. All right, next up we have flaying, which is pretty cool. Flaying is also known as skinning, which you might know um, is when you remove the skin from somebody's body while they're still alive. You skin them alive. This one is terrifying. So this is actually one of the oldest methods of torture on this list as well. This comes from Assyria, right? It comes from around 800 BCE. There were stone carvings found that depict warriors skinning or de-skinning, I guess, their like prisoners. The Assyrians were also one of the world's earliest empires Ever. So this is like one of the earliest forms of torture ever. And then here is a translation of the records. I guess I don't know how reliable this is, right? I mean, I'm getting it from 
from National Geographic, so it was pretty reliable, I think, but I don't know how they would translate from that language. I mean, I guess maybe I'm just stupid, right? But here's, anyways, here it is. I flayed as many nobles as had rebelled against me and draped their skins over the pile of corpses. Some I spread out within the pile, some I erected on stakes upon the pile. I flayed many right through my land and draped their skins over the walls. And this, by the way, is the Assyrian king Ashurn Asurpal the second. And then of course China did this as well, because China's weird or whatever. The Ming Dynasty did this between 1368 and 1644. That's a long time. That's a long time. And to make it even funnier, the reason that they were flayed is because Emperor Taizu, right, who was the one who actually named the Ming Dynasty the Ming Dynasty back in the day, back in like ancient China or whatever, he made a capital offense, which means that if you do the offense, you die. A capital offense for anyone to even criticize him. And the people that ended up criticizing him got de-skinned alive, flayed, and had their bodies nailed against walls. Now here's where it gets interesting, okay? I, I, I know you guys probably don't care about a history lesson here or whatever, but we're gonna do this because I find it interesting. So before the Aztecs were around in that area of Mexico, it was inhabited by a people called the Papo Loco, who worshipped a god named Zyptotec, which translates to the Lord of the Flayed. Now, ancient priests of Zyptotec would ritually sacrifice victims to this god in a ceremony called, I'm not gonna pronounce this. I'm not, I don't, I, I don't wanna ruin my reputation to pronounce this. This looks like a fake word, but I'm, I'll put it on screen. The ritual took place over the course of 40 whole days, every spring. A chosen person of the group, a chosen Popo Loka, would be dressed up as the god Zyptotec, wearing bright colors and jewelry, and they would be ritually sacrificed along with war captives in exchange for a beautiful harvest. That's what they thought, I guess. And then get this, the priests would wear the flayed skin before depositing it into, like, some holes in the ground. This is like some really, like, weird, messed up stuff, bro. Flaying is crazy, man. You know what's not crazy, though? Subscribing to the Poi YouTube channel, that's a really good idea. Everybody watching, go hit that subscribe button, go like, go leave a comment. Tell me what you think of my face in these videos now because it's kind of new, but let me know. Next up we have stoning. This one's kind of boring, I guess, but so what I didn't know about stoning, so it, stoning basically is like you throw stones at somebody till they die, right? Um, which is, I feel like it would take a while because I feel like I've been hit with stones in my life before and they didn't really do that, <laughs> that much damage or whatever, but I guess enough, right? And what I didn't understand is that what they would do to make sure they can't run away, not tie them up or anything, right? I mean, that that's like the obvious thing, right? But back in the ancient times, what they would do, like the medieval times, I should say, what they would do is they would bury the people up to either their chest or their neck. If they were a woman, they do it to their neck, I guess because if they're killing them, they care about modesty <laughs> for some reason. Anyways, and then they would do that, bury them so they like can't move at all, right? And then chuck the stones at them. Next we have the Breaking Wheel, or Catherine Wheel. This one is really creative, I guess. So how it would work is they would first start by breaking the people, literally breaking them, by either taking the actual wheel and like, uh, right on them, right? Or they would tie them to the wheel and then break their bones with like iron bars or whatever. Um, and then after that happened, but they're still alive by the way, they would then tie them to the wheel if they weren't already tied to the wheel. And the, the, the weird part is like, you know like the depiction in fiction of like how like your bones are like, you, like people who like can give their bones like go like all weird different ways. You know, like that one guy from The Flash, that one villain from The Flash, put some footage up, editor please. They would do that to these people because their bones are all broken, right? Like you know because like if like in Saw, like you can like break your ankle bone to get away or whatever, right? And like make it move ways it can't move usually. So they would do that, they would break all the connections, break all the bones, and then get them on the wheel, but like really just like stretch their bodies in ways they should not be going. This is crazy. And then they would just leave them there. They would leave them out in the open in public, usually like in like a public square for hours and hours, just sitting there, maybe days even sometimes, right? Of just laying out there, dying of thirst, hunger, bleeding out, the elements, the weather, whatever. Now this was used in ancient Rome, which does not surprise me at all. This seems like a very Roman thing. It's just like, I just thought Rome whenever I first heard about it. Now here's the interesting thing. Rome would typically like use this punishment for either slaves or Christians. <laughs> I am very glad I was not alive during the Roman days. And here's where it gets even more interesting. So in Rome, for the Christians, they would light a fire underneath the wheel. They would like be able to like turn it. Like there's a picture right here I'll put on screen. 
they would turn it while there's a fire underneath it. Like, dude, dude. Now, there's a Roman Jewish historian named Josephus, who, by the way, is a really interesting guy. I recommend looking into him if you want about what he said about, like, Rome and Judaism and Jesus and all that stuff. He has some interesting, like, history lore, right? But anyways, he described the execution writing this. They fixed the prisoner about a great wheel, whereof the noble-hearted youth had all his joints dislocated and all his limbs broken. The whole wheel was stained with his blood. Now here's where it gets the name Wheel of Catherine. So the most infamous moments of this thing being used is in 4th century CE in Rome, when they try to put to death St. Catherine of Alexandria, who was a Christian who refused to renounce her faith of Christianity. Um, go her, by the way. So they put her on the wheel, but then apparently the wheel broke and fell apart. And then she was ordered to be beheaded, right, by the emperor named Maxentius, right? But then when they tried to cut her head off, milk came out instead of blood. I mean, she still died, I guess, or whatever, but milk came out, not blood, which is interesting. Interesting little story, I guess. Probably not true. Probably not true at all. Um, but that's why it's called the Wheel of Catherine. Alright, now we have the Head Crusher, which is another really, really cool one. So, how this would work is it was like a contraption they put on your head, right? And there's a screw on top, right? And it would go like all the way around, and the screw would literally make it smaller, so it would crush your skull. Which is obviously not good, right? And this was used in Europe, obviously, because the British are in some weird stuff, man. I mean, if only they could learn to use this kind of, really, I mean, it's pretty good craftsmanship. If only they could use it for dental care. I don't know, man. Next, we have death by immolation. This one's pretty self-explanatory, if you know what immolation means. Moving on. Next one we have is drowning. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'll tell you what immolation means. I'll tell you, don't worry. Don't worry, man. Immolation means the act of killing yourself. Um, usually by burning. That's where it comes in. So, okay, let me give some context. So, they would use it a lot to burn, like, human candles a lot, where they would, like, tie somebody up on a pole, put, like, hay around them or something that's, like, flammable, right? And then put it on fire and burn them to death, right? Be used usually as a religious punishment as well, which is interesting in, like, Europe and stuff, right? But it was also used as a religious sacrifice, where people in certain religions would do that to themselves as a sacrifice to their god or deity or whatever. So, kind of cool, I guess. Also, you know what's kind of cool? Do you guys like my little, my little Lil Wayne quote over there? Wait, can you see that's Lil Wayne? Let me focus the camera. Hold on. Wait. Oh, I'm bad at cameras. There we go. Yeah. Editor, you might have to edit this a little bit because it's kind of bad. Right there. Yeah. Be good or be good at it, Lil Wayne. And then also my little Mike Wazowski collection. A little Mike Wazowski collection. Editor, I'm sorry for making you deal with this. And the viewers too, by the way. Next we have drowning. If you don't know what this is, basically it's when you drink too much water. You go to the store, you get a gallon of water, drink too much, you might drown. That's drowning. Excess of water. So, moving on. No, actually this was used in medieval Europe for witch trials, where suspected witches were thrown into the water to test their innocence. <laughs> so they would throw these women into water and say, if you're a witch, save yourself. And if you're not, too bad. We need to bring that back for all women. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hey, editor, if any of my jokes you find to be too much, definitely remove them, please. Next up we have Impaling, which is a really cool one because vampires are pretty awesome. And why do I say vampires, you might ask? Well, because Impaling is most famously used by Vlad the Impaler in the 18th century, so... No, I'm actually lying, because in 15th century Romania there was this guy named Vlad who became known as Vlad the Impaler because he would... he, he was like a... He was the ruler of a country back then, right? Of Romania. Or what used to be Romania, like what it was in, in the 15th century. Um, and he would impale his prisoners and people like that and put it in his own front yard. Impale them like, you know, they would like take a, take a stick, put it up your butt all the way through your mouth, right? Kill you like that. Or sometimes they wouldn't even kill you because like they, they would do it in a way where it wouldn't actually kill you. They would like try to avoid all the major organs and stuff. So you'd stay alive and just bleed out pretty much, right? Which is awful. But I say vampire because they based Dracula on that guy. He was the original Dracula. Vlad. Sounds like a Dracula name. But they did it's true. Editor put up proof so they know I'm not lying. Because I care what you guys think of me. I really do. I hope you guys like me. Alright, next we have Walling. This one's pretty self-explanatory by the name. I feel like a lot of these are. Because like with punishment names, they don't really care to make it like poetic or anything, you know? It's like, oh, the electric chair. I wonder what is a chair that's electric. I, I wonder why. It's, I mean, the names are so boring, you know, except for like, I guess the, the wheel, the Catherine wheel and stuff. 
Anyways, walling is when you put somebody in a very confined space. Like, remember that one I said earlier? That we did earlier? This is... I said you could, like, build bricks around them, right? This is that. So they would take bricks and put them around somebody and, like, build a wall around them so they can't leave, they can't breathe, can't eat, can't drink, whatever. They die. This is called live entombment. It was used for a long time, ancient times, usually. Um, moving on to the iron chair. This one was used, of course, in medieval Europe because Europe's weird. Um, where it's a chair that they would like strap you into, right? They would put straps on like the uh, the the wrist part and the ankle part of the chair, right? They would strap you into it, and what the chair is, there's a little twist, right? There's a little twist. It's not just any regular chair. You might be thinking it's actually a chair with spikes on it. Put a picture. Bah, spikes. Um, and it was used to torture people, like spikes you know they confess to stuff or whatever tell information and then die eventually because you know spikes whatever next one is called republican marriage um this one does kill you eventually it's a slow and painful death actually this one's probably the slowest and most painful one it's actually when you decide to marry someone who voted for trump so what happens is you get married to them and then you have to live with them and then you hear them always talking about their racist thoughts and all this dumb stuff and you're trying to sleep but then this dumb wife of yours right is like uh, they build the wall why'd they arrest the people for the capital raid bring them back they should be president stimulus checks are you kidding me ah! And then after a while of that, I mean, because sometimes you even agree with her a little bit, but I mean, just shut up, you know, just shut up, Republican wife. Um, and then after enough of it, you just kind of lose your mind and then you die of a heart attack because you get so stressed because you, this woman, then you go play golf every day. Anyways, this is all a bit, by the way, I'm kidding about all of this. This is all, don't take any of that seriously. That was all a joke. Don't take any of that seriously. What a Republican marriage actually was, is it was a method of execution used in the French Revolution. It would involve taking a man and a woman making them naked, tie them together, throw them into a river, make them drown together. The reason why is really cool. The reason is that the French people are weird and cruel, um, and I guess they don't like men and women being together. So... Next is hung, drawn, and quartered. This was a punishment in England for men convicted of high treason. This one you probably heard of before. Um, it's a three-parter. It's a, it's a triple whammy. They get you. They get you with a triple whammy, bro. Three of them, bro. Three. Can you imagine that? Three. Well, it's more than two, three. And so the victim would be hanged first, right? Um, this is the hung part, obviously, but not to where they kill you, just to where like it breaks your neck a little bit, you know, and then you can't breathe a little bit. Oh no, I can't breathe. Um, hung to almost death, right? And then the drawn part comes, and the drawn part is when they are disemboweled. Yeah, disemboweled. I'm not gonna elaborate. You can Google it if you want. Disemboweled. You can probably get it from the word disemboweled, disemboweled. And the quartered part is when they would take like four horses usually and then separate your arms and your legs apart, right? Like this and then your legs, whatever. And then the horse would like run away and rip your whole body apart. And sometimes it would even behead you before that happened, which I think is kind of boring because you're dead then. So why even do the quartering part? But I guess it doesn't really matter because uh, it's not happening to me. I'm alive, bro. I'm alive. I feel like I'm not funny. And I feel like this video is just gonna really prove that and I'm gonna get a bunch of people saying like, you're not funny, quit trying to be funny. I feel like that's gonna happen and I'm kinda scared actually. <laughs> All right, now we're getting to the ones, this is the final level of these, right? These are the ones that are truly sick and twisted. Truly sick and twisted. The ones that make you like stay up at night. Starting with keel hauling. Oh my God, you can't, you, you can't see my little Mike Wazowski, my little Mike Wazowski ornament. Hold up guys, look at this thing. Sorry, Lil Wayne, you gotta wait, bro. You gotta wait your turn, because Mike Wazowski better, bro. Anyways, keel hauling. So this is a maritime punishment, which means that it was made for sailors. So what would happen is if you were a bad boy, they would tie you with a rope, throw you overboard, right? Drag you underwater from one end of the ship to another, right? Which, by the way, these ships back then were huge. This would take minutes at a time to drag you. Minutes, like multiple, like five minutes. And then they would bring you back up, right? But then at this point, you're either, you're probably dead at this point. You're probably dead, right? Most likely you're dead. But if not, then you got vicious, vicious wounds from the barnacles down there. The actual barnacles. Ah! Jump scare. Barnacle. Scary things, right? You're, then you are injured crazily, right? You're cutted everywhere. It hurts everywhere. And then you, you live the rest of your life with these like awful scars. This was used by the Dutch in the late 16th century. The Dutch people are pretty cool, actually. The Dutch are pretty awesome. So, Dutch... Love you. If you're Dutch, leave a comment. Next, we have bamboo torture. This one is, remember the uh, the little impaling one? 
Imagine that, but it's like a million times worse, right? So with the Impaling one, usually you'll die of shock or of bleeding instantly, you know? And then if you don't, you just kind of sit there, I guess. That one just kind of sucks, but Bamboo Torture, so much worse, so much worse. So if you don't know how Bamboo works, it basically like stays in the ground for like months at a time, right? And then it shoots up really quick, as tall as it goes in like a few weeks, pretty much, right? And so they'll find a patch of bamboo that's barely grown up in the air a little bit, right? And then they'll tie somebody, secure them over the bamboo so that when it grows, it pierces their body. This is crazy, man. Who thought of this, bro? Who who thought of this? And you'd think it was a British thing, right? And then why, why couldn't they use bamboo to make it some freaking bamboo toothbrushes or whatever, right? But no, this is actually a East Asian thing they did back in the ancient times and recently as well. It's kind of scary, medieval and ancient times. Now let's talk about sawing, right? Which, by the way, first of all, I mean, saw movies are great. Saw, first one's amazing. The new one sucked. People liked it. I didn't like it that much. Anyway, sawing, what it is, it's a form of execution where you're hung upside down, right? With your legs spread right sounds fun at first but it's not fun i promise you what they do is they take a saw and they cut you from your groin in half who thought of this bro who who thought of this this is crazy like i'm just in amazement that somebody would actually think of this like have the idea to do this it's crazy and the thing is you're conscious for most of it because your brain is what really controls your consciousness right and what they would do is like you're upside down so your brain would still have all the blood because blood rushes to your brain right so no matter what, you're gonna be conscious through most of this thing. This is awful, bro. Next up, we have rat torture, which is one that I've heard of before. Mm, so kind of boring, I guess. Bad job of the maker of this iceberg. But no, no, no. So what this is, is they'll tie you down, right? And then they'll put a cage over your stomach or like your boobs or whatever, right? And they'll heat up the top of the cage, right? So then the rat wants to get out, but how does the rat get out? It can't bite through the metal, so what does it bite through? It bites through you. It bites through you. It goes through your body. It goes through your skin, your intestines, through whatever you have right there, right? To get out. It's awful, man. This was used primarily in Europe during the Dutch Revolt in the 17th century. Next we have scapism, which I think is my favorite one that I've learned from doing this whole research. This one is crazy, bro. This one is actually wild, like whack. So they would take like a really short boat like a small boat you could barely fit in right they would tie you into it right obviously all these are you get tied up they tie you into it and then they would force feed you milk and honey like massive amounts of milk and honey which guess what happens when you drink a bunch of milk and honey you diarrhea everywhere you diarrhea everywhere so they make you just get diarrhea in your own filth right tied in this boat in your own filth right and then they would take the same mixture of milk and honey spread it over all of your body right all over and you're tied up so you can't move or do anything, right? So they would just let you out on the water in like a stagnant water, let you float around. And what it would do is the insects would come and breed and feed on you, on you. From insects eating you and then breeding you and then getting infections and stuff in you. This is awful, awful. You would get infections from that. Infections, man. Come on, man. Next we have the hanging cage or the iron cradle. This one's kind of boring, but it's pretty cool. You just be in a cage. They would hang you up somewhere pretty popular in a cage and you just kind of sit there until you die of thirst or shock or hunger, or the elements or whatever, like if the weather comes and gets you, you know? Next we have the tongue terror, which is really, that sounds like a really bad horror movie. Like if you use like the other word for terror, like, cause this word is like terror, like someone who tears, right? But it, like the terror, like it was terrifying. Like that sounds like a bad horror movie from like the seventies. Anyways, the tongue terror is a tool that was used to grip and tear out somebody's tongue I wondered, crazy, right, from the name. Um, this was used in medieval Europe for crimes like blasphemy, which is really funny. Um, you, you blaspheme and then boom, your tongue gets ripped out. That's awful, that's awful. Does that kill you? I mean, that's gotta kill you, right? Wait, let me make sure. Let me, let me do some research, guys. What the, wait, tongue terror demon? What is that? Oh, it's from demon tongue? It's from an anime. Oh, is this from, oh, this is from Demon Slayer. I've not gotten there yet. I'm in the middle of season two right now. Maybe I have gotten here, actually, I don't know. I'm in like the first like five episodes of season two. This show is really good. I love the show, by the way. I absolutely love Demon Slayer. Anyways, that's not important. It pretty much would kill you. Um, it would give you an infection, if anything, you know, so it pretty much would kill you most of the time. Next, we have the Judas Cradle, which... So this is a pointy chair, like a pyramid they would put you on, right? It would penetrate your... either your anus or if you're a girl it would penetrate the other thing that you would have right penetrate that deeply sharply painfully right then they would tie you up obviously there right make ridicule you get people around you like oh look at him look at him humiliation right by the way okay. while we're on that note a lot of these say like you're hung up in public for humiliation right were people back then just going into town and being like 
oh look there's a there's a naked guy on a big pyramid with the with the pyramid in his anus and it's bleeding everywhere and he's dying that's so funny i'm gonna laugh at him is that a thing do people do that that's crazy to me that that's just like a thing where people like he's like a, a man in a cage and think it's normal or like laugh at him like geez dude people back then sucked anyways then they would even attach like weights on your ankles and knees to like make it go further and then it would just kill you eventually like from the thing going up you jeez man Next up, we have Execution by Elephant, which is as awesome as it sounds, by the way. You'd be tied up, brought to a public place, of course, public place is stupid, anyways. And then a trained elephant wearing ceremonial wardrobe would crush you. They would train an elephant to do this to you, men. This was common in South and Southeast Asia back in the day, and the last purported one of it being done, I think, was in the early 1900s. I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure. Okay, I'm not sure right now, but I'm pretty sure they still use it pretty recently, which is insane. This is funny, though. You're just getting crushed by a big old elephant, bro. It's kind of funny. They would have to train it to kill people. Next up, we have Ling Chi, or the Death of a Thousand Cuts. This was practiced in China until the early 20th century. Of course, China, bro. Of course. This sounds like an anime, by the way. Death of a Thousand Cuts sounds like a move that they would do, you know? Like, oh, 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 oh. And it say, like, Death of a Thousand Cuts, and the guy be like, you know, how anime works. Anyways, this is what it sounds like, pretty much. They would tie you up somewhere, and then they would just remove flesh from you very slowly. They would just, like, cut little bits of skin off to make it just as painful as possible for you. This one sucks. Okay, now we have... Okay, I lied, actually. This is my favorite one. This is the Poena Kule. Kule? Poena Kule. This was a Roman punishment. This is the most awesome one ever. Okay, so this was saved for people who had a family offense, like if you killed your parents or another like close family member, right? Now, this one's also called the Sack Punishment or the Penalty of the Sack, and it's not going where you think. It's not. Even though that'd be really cool if it was an actual Sack Punishment, it'd be way cooler. It's just wait, because this one's really cool too, right? So... This is the one where, again, if you kill your parents, this happens to you, right? They would tie you in a sack, right? They would sew you into a sack. And then they would throw you into a river or a body of water. They'd drown you, right? But that's not where it ends, man, because in the sack, they would put a monkey, a chicken, and a snake in there with you. And then throw you overboard, bro. That is so funny to me, bro. That is hilarious to me. A monkey, a chicken, and a snake in a sack with you when you're just like thrown over they just did that to people for fun like bro you're wasting a perfectly good monkey chicken and snake like jeez jeez man give it to me i'm hungry come on i'm hungry come on come on elaine okay i'm not gonna do my jerry seinfeld impression on youtube <laughs> oh my god now we have tying intestines around a tree which is pretty boring i mean it's not boring but it's just pretty simple you know they would slowly remove your intestines from your body keeping you alive and tie it around a tree and then like pull it to kill you, you know? Now, let's take a bet, guys. Who do you think invented this? What people group do you think invented this? Tying intestines around a tree. Take, put your bet in the chat. Put your bet down there in the comments, guys. Let's find out. It was America. It was actually America. It was America, makes sense. We're the fat ones, right? We're fat. All right, next we have forced organ harvesting, which is pretty self-explanatory. Again, this is like a modern one done in China, obviously. Of course it's China, bro. Of course China does forced organ harvesting. Um, where, yeah, they just, you know, take your organs out. Next, we have the Tiger Bench, which is a form of torture where the victim's legs are tied to a bench with increasing weights added to their feet, causing excruciating pain. So to give you a perspective, I'll put a picture on screen, right? But it's where your legs are, like, kind of put up a little bit, and then there's just weights on it more and more and more, and it just, like, hurts like hell. Now, finally, the last one, very last one we're going to talk about today is the Blood Eagle. This is a legendary Viking execution method where they would kind of, like, Put you like on your back, right? Like imagine I'm on my back, like hold on. I'll give you a little demonstration here. So you're on your back, right? And then they would take your ribs and like rip them out, right? Rip them out like wings. And then they would attach your intestines to the freaking to the ribs to make it like an actual like look like a wing. This is like a Viking execution thing. And it's kind of debated among historians if it was actually real, like if that actually happened or not. I like to think that it did because it's kind of funny, that's kind of cool. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the face format, my face in it. Hope you guys like my face. Um, leave a like if you did. Comment what you want me to change for my next video because I'm trying to like find myself on YouTube right now. And I could really use some help, some critiques, some criticism. So yeah, let me know guys. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great night, everyone. Sleep well.